You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where we talk all about what's new in Azure Machine Learning, automated ML with my good friend Cesar. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show where we're talking all about what's new in Azure Machine Learning, automated ML with my good friend Cesar. Cesar, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are. And what you do. Yeah, my name is uh, Cesar de la Torre. I work in uh, in the Azure Machine Learning team as principal program manager. Fantastic. So we've had a lot of shows on automated machine learning. Can you tell us what it is for those that maybe haven't haven't heard about it yet? Yeah. So uh, AutoML is part of the Azure Machine Learning product, uh, and basically it allows you to have more productivity. So instead of uh, having to know all the algorithms and how to create a model, you can just provide data, uh, what kind of machine learning tasks you want to do, like classification, regression, time series, and then what you want to predict. And then we'll do a bunch of different trainings with different models, comparing one to the other. And finally, let's say we train 50 or 100 models, we give you the best one. And, and then you can just deploy it, use the model, and something new that I'm going to tell later about code generation. That's actually really cool because I, I remember describing this to data scientists and they were like, oh, wait a minute, Seth, this is something that we needed to really like the boring part of machine learning is going through all the first models. And this kind of takes that away. And I honestly, I think it's I think it's great. So question for you, Cesar, what's new? What should people be looking out for? Yeah. So one thing that's new um, and um you can use it today as public preview in with SDK one or or even from the UI and and see it is code generation. Basically, uh, we uh, are creating a, a white box with AutoML. So instead of like until now, AutoML was some people could say it's kind of a black box because I provide the data, you give me the model, but then with the model I can just deploy it and use it. But we got the feedback from customers saying that hey. Um, even uh, I have uh, regulations and policies and because of the law sometimes that I need to have the real training code of the model that I'm going to deploy into production. Uh, and also when I have like deterministic reproducibility, so this is the code for that model. If I get new data, it'll train exactly the same way. Uh, and finally, there are, there are also some data scientists that they say, hey, you know, but I want full control of the training code. And I also even want to uh, tweak the hyperparameters of the model and, you know, work at lower level of uh, what uh, our model gives me, right? So that's provided with code generation. It's like the real training code of the model that we provided with AutoML. And it can be any, you can pick the best one or you can get any other model Kind of child models uh, on the way and you can see the training code for that particular model and that's actually really cool because i it's not it, I, I know it used to it used to make the model and then you would just get it and it would be wonderful but now you just don't get the model file let's just say it's a pickle file because it's you know maybe a psychic yeah. learn model or something but but now you actually get the code that you would have written if you would have done it because i'm guessing there's a lot of different settings that go and are involved uh, with uh, building these models like featureizers, model yep. hyperparameters, etc. Yeah, exactly. Like if I go to the next slide, um, basically you could go to to the UI also from the SDK, but like from the UI is pretty clear. You select any model from AutoML from a particular experiment, uh, like say this one, XGBoost classifier, and then uh, you you can see um, the script.py, which is the training code of that particular model. In this case, I'm showing here just the algorithm, like scikit-learn XGBoost classifier with the hyperparameters. But even before the training, we are also generating uh, the featureization of the data, uh, what transformations are, are, are happening on each of the columns. So it's kind of the end-to-end processes. We you load the data until the model is trained. And you can see it's like we are using a scikit-learn pipeline fit, and this is training your model, right? That's cool. So when <coughs> when you're calling these, how do you how do you set these up? Is it can you only just do it in the UI? You have to give it data, or are there are multiple ways to do this. There are multiple ways. I can do a demo if you if you yeah, want. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's take a look. So 
Yeah. So basically, the way you kind of trigger code gen is like it's going to happen by default. Like you don't need to do something special. You could just uh, you know like create an AutoML experiment from from the UI and so data. So kind of the the, the typical uh, workflow with AutoML. Or you can also create the experiment with AutoML, like a regular AutoML config with SDK1 in this case, uh, what you want to do, like the task and so on. And, and then we have just one particular um, property, which is for enabling or disabling uh, code generation. By default, it's, it's uh, now uh, going to be generating the code. So even if you don't put it, it's going to be working, but you could disable uh, code gen, right? So basically, it's like a regular um, regular training. So when you launch you, you, that uh, AutoML training, you will see like, like always, you know, like different models that have been trained uh, with AutoML. Uh, this is the best one. And let's say I want to see, hey, for, I'd like to see what, what's the training code for this particular model, like XGBoost classifier. Mm -hmm. You could select here, and click on view generated code, or I can also get into the models page, like I'm click now. And because <clears throat> also something that we added like quite a few months already for visibility is, yeah, you, you get a model, but you can see that you can just deploy it, download it, explain it. Uh, we, we also added like, you can view the hyperparameters for this particular model. And these are right, the hyperparameters, but that was not enough because if you want to create the training code for this model, then you need to do kind of a reverse engineer or the featureization. That's, that's, that can be complex, right? right? And we made it super simple. You just click here on view generated code for this particular model. And then we're going to copy like two files, basically. One is a notebook, convenient notebook uh, to run that training code. And then the training code, which is a PY file, right? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> this is a, a convenient notebook, but at this point, this is not AutoML anymore. It's just uh, using Azure Machine Learning SDK, uh, where it's specifying like the cluster where you can run that training code of that particular model. Uh, and also something interesting is we are using, um, what is the, that cell, uh, the environment the Docker environment that was used when training. So you have all the dependencies, but then it's, it's like a very simple code. Like it's just using um, script run config uh, pointing to the script dot file uh, dot pi, which is the code, the training code, right? So this is just a way to run script dot pi in the cloud. But then this is the interesting code script dot pi. And here is where you can see how we load the data. Um, do I'm going to go to the interesting part, but you, you can see load the data, split data sets. Uh, then there are some uh, code for preparing the data. Um, it's everything do, that you would do if you were writing yeah, this thing, basically. Exactly. Uh, here you can see the uh, data, like the columns featureization. This is a uh, data set with 50 columns. And you can see that uh, I'm doing the, the same featureization for a group of columns and then another featureization for another group. So this is uh, kind of optimized. And then this is the interesting code, right? Like you can see we are using XGBoost classifier, all the hyperparameters for this particular model. You could tweak any of these hyperparameters. And finally, you can see here the, the uh, scikit-learn pipeline for DS tests, featureization, preprocessing, and the model training. And then when you call here um, fit, uh, then it's training, right? So you could even take this code, uh, change the way you are loading the data set and run it anywhere, even on premises. Uh, but of course we made that notebook uh, that is gonna make you just uh, super easy to run this training code, like just running that notebook, right? And what's cool is it it's not like, like I was looking at the code, it's like, oh, this is just regular code that I would run if I was doing this myself. But it turns out that, that the automated machine learning thing went through a whole bunch of them to try stuff out. Yeah, yeah, because this code is 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 um, using just like in this case, scikit-learn, 
Um, and then there are a few libraries that we are providing as decouple libraries as well, things for like um, uh, some featureization uh, steps or maybe um, related to assembly. But most of the code, uh, we, uh, we wanted to use directly the open source uh, classes, like in this case, uh, Exibus Classifier. So that was really cool. It was cool to see how you the thing ran, but it wasn't like some hidden thing. You actually had the code for the notebook to run it, and then you actually had the code for the actual model, featureization, all that stuff. Anything else that's new? Yeah, the other area that I'd like to highlight is uh, precisely like um, now in, in build, we are releasing a new um, version of the development platform. Um, and then AutoML is part of this new version, V2. Uh, so then uh, previously in, in V1, uh, there was a CLI uh, for, for Azure Machine Learning, but not for AutoML. So this is completely new supporting CLI uh, for AutoML. And basically that means that you can uh, write in a YAML file, all the um, AutoML experiment properties, like what task, what's your data, what's the timeout and so on, and then run or trigger that training, uh, run directly from a command, a single line of command pointing to the YAML, right? So why would you want to do that? Uh, so it's great for MLOps operations. So basically, um, you, you can trigger training in, in your uh, CI/CD, uh, but for models uh, from uh, GitHub Actions or from um, Azure DevOps. And, and then I find myself like uh, it's super easy to test uh, again, like uh, the same run, but just tweaking one property and then run it again right quickly from the CLI, right? And then of course, we also have um, uh, support for Python SDK, because when you are kind of working with the data, transforming the data, exploring the, the, the data. Uh, for that, like uh, using a notebook uh, is, is a lot more flexible, right? So we, we also have that in V2, but then we improve the, the code because in V1, the AutoML config class has like a very long list of properties, possible properties. And now we kind of simplify the signature. So just a short list for uh, what's common and then like optional uh, sections uh, later. So it's a cleaner code. So let me do a, a, a demo, uh, first of all, about the CLI. Okay. So as I mentioned, you write the properties of your AutoML job in, in YAML. So for instance, I can see here the experiment name, the, the task is classification, uh, what's the target column name, and so on. And the cool thing is that because you, uh, I'm using um, um, VS Code, this was Studio Code, and, and because I'm putting here the schema, then we also have IntelliSense. So for instance, if, uh, because the task is classification, the parametrics are different than if the task was like a regression or forecasting. Right. So if I delete and then uh, control space, we should have here, yeah, the multiple uh, possibilities for classification parameters. Like in this case, I select uh, the area under the curve, right? Um, so once you have like uh, all the properties in the YAML, then you just simply go to the CLI um, and you just uh, use the, the extension with the Azure uh, CLI. So in this case is, is uh, AC uh, machine learning job create. And then uh, I'm providing here that YAML file. And of course, uh, you, my uh, where I'm going to run it, like workspace, resource group, and so on. You can put all these uh, except the, the file um, like in by default values, but uh, it's also flexible to change it here, right? And then just hit enter, and in, in just a few seconds, it will trigger asynchronously um, a run. So that's really cool. Basically, with the CLI command, what you're doing is you're giving it instructions in the YAML that has some auto completions that tell it to run an automated machine learning job, and that just runs it in the cloud? Right. So at the end of the day, it's exactly the same kind of action that if you trigger that from, from Python, right? At the end, uh, I, I have this run, and then it's going to run multiple child runs for different model trainings, but it's exactly the same. In this case, it was triggered from the CLI. Uh, in other cases, it can be triggered from uh, the Python, Python SDK, which is what I'm going to show you now. Okay. 
in this case, I, I have this notebook um, with um, the new Python SDK from Azure Machine Learning. And you can see that uh, we have these new functions. We call it like uh, factory functions. Uh, this is um, for classification. So this is one, one difference. Like now with, with AutoML, we have like 10 different tasks. It's not just classification, regression, and time series, but also uh, for related to images, um, computer vision, uh, object detection, and also NLP for text classification and so on. So basically what we're doing is that we, we are having like 10 different, 10 different uh, factory functions. In this case, I'm, I'm using here for the classification example that we were discussing. And then we have like a first level properties, kind of what, which ones are the most uh, common. Uh, and with this would be enough because then the rest are uh, by default values. But then if you want to kind of uh, add additional uh, properties like limits for timeouts, or um, I want to block some algorithms or even additional properties related to assembling and so on, then we have these, these additional setters. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a lot more uh, kind of clearer uh, instead of having like a very long list of properties on the group, right? Uh, then um, once you we have this uh, job configured, then we use the same um, kind of a function launcher um, in, in Azure Machine Learning to create a job. So create an, uh, or update, and then we provide our classification job. And then uh, again, the same thing, right? But now, uh, these uh, these runs uh, or this experiment is, is created with uh, from the SDK, right? Yeah, I mean this is this is really cool. So to summarize, if I'm understanding this, we have the new stuff. We have the code gen, which I thought was was really cool. We have the uh, new CLI with some YAML descriptions, autocomplete mm -hmm. inside of Visual Studio Code, and then we have the new SDK that has some simplification, some factory methods and some setters, which make it all a whole lot easier. I mean, is, is that, am I getting this right? Yeah, it's, uh, that's right. This and is then, so cool. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. The only thing that I wanted to add as well, although I'm not covering these today, uh, and I think you you also did other other shows for this, uh, new things in AutoML is precisely AutoML for images. Uh, that's right. This like classification, uh, object detection, image segmentation, and then also NLP for text classification and so on. And some improvements about forecasting and, and hierarchies. Um, but yeah, this is also in, in, in preview and, and really exciting because now we are uh, kind of getting our ML into the world of uh, deep learning with uh, these new tasks as well. Well, this has been really cool. Just a little link here. If you want to learn more about CodeGen, we got a little link just down there for you. This has been really awesome, Cesar. Thank you so much for being with us, my friend. Thank you. Happy to see you. All right. We've been learning all about what's new in Azure Machine Learning Automated ML here on the AI Show. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.